When I uh, first went for the job, I told um, the governors and county what I wanted to do, and it included a project called Room 13. The culture of Room 13, which is about freedom and innovation and creativity, that is what has kind of driven the project on the marsh. We had a vacancy for a head teacher and we sent out all the adverts. We had lots of people coming in and I think we shortlisted for approximately six people. One man and five women. They came with PowerPoint presentations and chiffon scarves and suits. Mike came in a pinstripe suit and silver shoes. I don't actually think at that point that he thought he had a hope in hell of getting the job. So he just totally winged it. But do you know what? He looked absolutely perfect for us. For the type of school we were and the vision that we could see from Mike seemed to make him absolutely perfect for us. It's an evolving project which is very much a team effort. Uh, although I've got like the overarching vision, none of it would be going on without Sue who does, you know, she sorts out the risk assessments and all of the insurances and rings up county and says, oh, Mike's had another idea, sorry about this, and like brings them round and stuff. Got Alex out here in all weathers looking at the water buffalo, Helen and Paul who do this absolutely every single week relentlessly, you know, snow, rain, coming out doing, doing the forest school stuff. There's this family now of um, adults and children in this beautiful environment having amazing experiences and it's kind of evolving from there. I introduced to the school four chickens and from four chickens it went to six geese, four pygmy goats. I then heard of this marsh being up for grazing lease so I suggested to Mike that we rented it as an outside environment for the children but also to expand on our livestock. got a little group of children together and started talking to them about the Bronze Age because the school is on the site of the second largest Bronze Age settlement in Europe. We're going to give you a, a hammer and you can break them down into smaller bits. Okay. Right, we need to break this bit, this bit, this bit, yes, this bit, this bit. Don't hit it too hard because otherwise you just end up with lots of little bits that disappear. That's better. Lovely. They are ready. Okay, now shake. Now shake. 
that's it, and all of them will be put into that. Where did are the closest living relative to the now extinct auroch, which is a prehistoric bovine which used to roam the marshes 3,000 years ago. I'd already started making more links with the archaeologists and historians and looked into some of the, the history of, of these marshes and learnt that uh, the people 3,000 years ago lived in structures down here which were raised off the floodplain like this on wooden stakes and said to Alex and Paul, I'd really like to build a roundhouse and it would be great if it was obviously on stilts. Alex said, well, let's just have it coming out of a small lake here. So they set about building that with the help of the children. So the year six children laid down every single one of these posts on the raised wooden walkway and the year five children did all of the thatching. about getting them to really engage with their natural environment and to be excited about being outside and to just have new experiences. The journey is part of coming to Forest School. The children get their backpacks, get their buckets full of equipment and we, we walk over to the marsh.
we do a whole range of activities. We do um, green woodworking skills, so the children do sawing, splitting, they do whittling, drilling wood, and they make whatever they want to make out of green wood. Fire is a massive part of Forest School, and we really encourage the children to learn how to be um, safe with the fire. So they learn how to light fires, how to build different types of fires, and then every session we will cook on the fire and we will make hot drinks together and share food together around the fire. I've skinned rabbits with the children, we've plucked pigeons, we've plucked pheasants, uh, we've cooked them on an open fire and the children have eaten them. In here is a um, trout. We wrapped the trout up in tin foil, then we buried it in um, hay, and now we wrapped it up in clay, and it's going to go on the fire to cook. The, the heat of the clay and the fire will cook the trout inside. Does everybody have a hot drink? The beehives, when they um, first arrived, they were all really plain and in true West Drive style, the Room 13 committee, which is the children, artists, decided they wanted to decorate them and paint them to welcome the bees. And the day the bees arrived, a wild swarm of bees came and took up residence in one of the hives. And it really was a, a lovely touch of magic. So there's a little bit there, a little bit there. On their own, yeah, they mate from the north of the They don't have a colony, but they'll, they'll mate. Every child in the school has bottle fed a lamb. Every child in the junior school has bottle fed a calf. We've got some ewes in lamb. Obviously, when one starts to lamb, I will go straight into a classroom and grab two kids and get them out there in amongst it. And I know that they'll be fighting over who can get out the door first. But that's the enthusiasm that you want. We took a shortcut one day, and along that shortcut, we found a dead sheep and um, the children were fascinated um, and in my studio I have a shelf of death and so week after week we would go down the shortcut and we would discover the sheep more and more decomposed until eventually we just found the, the skeleton it was picked clean by the foxes and so the children brought back the spinal column and the skull and then the children named it Dead Sheep Pass which to this day it is still known as On an emotional and intellectual level, when children are doing their computer games and things, which is better than watching television, they are moving out of their comfort zones and they are being challenged. But what isn't happening is they're not being challenged physically. So it's not about not doing those things, but I think we have to offer children a physical challenge, an opportunity to move outside of their physical comfort zone. The reason for that is because it teaches children physical resilience, it builds character and it builds grit. We never have parents who come in and say, why are you doing this? They're just really happy for their children to take part in what we're doing.